Angel, are you American born? I mean, you're San Francisco born, huh? You're San Francisco born. And uh, you're not uh, you're not a squatter. Okay, you have your own house. Huh, Angel? I mean, your own cage. Okay, we're gonna... Okay, 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 okay. Let's watch the video, okay? Let's watch the video. Okay, I know you feel bad. Okay. Overall, I agree with Sean. Uh, he creates content on YouTube under Actual Justice Warrior if you want to check out his content. But what he says there is totally true. Greetings and salutations, loyal viewers of this channel. My name is Sean, and today we're going to talk about the second half of this Majority Report video where they get into squatting after they completely embarrass themselves on the issue of crime because they try to defend squatting, but in the most cowardly, weak-willed way humanly possible, they never actually address a single case that's actually going on that has made this an issue. Instead, they talk about these abstract concepts that are not happening, pivot to some dope in Australia who's advocating for people to steal homes, and this is because the majority report are propagandists, and they know for a fact if they presented any of the actual cases that have people animated out there to the public, they would be indefensible. Now, we're going to get into this, but before we do, I want to thank everybody who's up over at actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give you, give me the money. Okay? And remind you that on Saturday, April 27th in Austin, Texas, I will be at Mines Fest. So link the tickets, top of the description, promo code AJW for 20% off. Now I want to start with a quick correction. In the beginning of the previous video, they were actually interacting with a caller, a guy called Dave from Jamaica, and I thought he was so dumb as a person, it might have been a troll caller. So right off the bat, they opened this video with a caller, and the caller is speaking with a Jamaican accent, but I have to be honest, after listening to the entirety of this person's call, I think that maybe, just maybe, this guy might be a troll. But I have been told time and time again that this is a legitimate person calling in. And it is possible that who they're referring to in this phone call as the person who's covering crime and squatting issues is actually Anna Kasparian, which makes Emma's comments about people being victimized by crime, getting titillated by that victimization, all the more worse. I'm so, but it's it's sort of, you're you're right, Bender. But it's also people like get titillated by it. To be honest with you, that haven't experienced it before. Yeah, just for clarity, if this is about Anna, one, it's cowardly for them to talk crap about her for thirty minutes and not name her. And two, Emma, who I thought was a friend of Anna Kasparian, saying that she got titillated by being victimized in a crime that was a sexual assault is absolutely horrible. Now, like I said, you can watch the full video about the crime portion of this segment linked in the description, but let's get on to the squatting issue because these guys are showing their infinite cowardice throughout the whole course of this section of the video. But people see homeless people, uh, you know, uh, people, how is people see homeless people and they feel unsafe. So then they distinctly, they, they, they correlate that immediately with crime. Um, and so that I really do think, and then that's why we probably see this, uh, you know, this, this, and I'm seeing this everywhere. Mainstream media is going wild because I heard them like the radio, like one of the morning zoo shows the other day, the whole squatting issue, which is yeah, exactly. forever squat. And first of all, squatters, there is no squatters rights law in New York. So first of all, I just want to point out that Matt Binder, absolute buffoon, idiot in every possible way, as I proved in the previous video. And a simple Google search will tell you that yes, there is a thing called squatters rights in New York law. This is the adverse possession statutes. Anyone can look them up. And yes, they're in all 50 states. But what makes this particular case even more egregious for Binder to talk about is that we actually had a 2019 amendment, two amendments that have created the problem that we're seeing right here where people are able to squat with just 30 days and it's almost impossible to get these people out of your property without going through the lengthy eviction process. So let me break that down for you as well. So again, anybody can look this up, but it's two changes in city law from 2019 that now dictate that landlords cannot boot a squatter without a special proceeding and have to file a lawsuit in order to get them out. And these amendments are actually quite simple. The New York Real Property Actions Proceedings Law number 711 was amended to say that occupants of a dwelling or housing accommodation can't be kicked out without, quote, a special proceeding. Now, the reason this small, seemingly innocuous tweak has led to such problems is because there's a huge backlog in tenant court, and this possibly has to do with the fact that we have the eviction moratorium and people just stop paying the rent during that period 
period of time. So even if you catch one of these would-be squatters in your property before the 30-day time period, like that case in Queens, New York, where there was somebody who broke in to this woman's deceased mother's home. We have to start at the beginning. Adele, the hardest question is how do you say your name? We met Adele and Delora outside the home her parents left her in Flushing, Queens. She's in the process of selling it. No, he lost it. But she's been locked out. She claims squatters moved in on February 6th and refused to leave. What's it like being here knowing you can't go inside of your own home? It's enraging. It really is. In New York, squatters have rights after 30 days. By the time that someone does their investigation and they do their work and their job, will be well over the 30 days, and this man will have stolen my home. You end up in a situation where the police can't adjudicate it on the fly, so they end up telling you to go to court, but your first court date is after the 30-day period, and then you have to go through eviction proceedings that take multiple years. So that woman who was arrested for changing the locks on her own property did so within 30 days, but it didn't matter due to the fact that you required this special proceeding. On top of that, what they won't tell you because they don't cover any individual case is that that man on the local news segment, Brian Rodriguez, who said that he wanted some payment for the work. He didn't show me a lease. This is a bill. Is a bill for work he says he had done to the house. He didn't show police a lease either. The police department doesn't have a lease? No. He's got no documentation. So how does this all end then? Well, when do you the, leave? The way it ends is, is either she pays me my money that I put into the house, pay me the money, and I'll leave. Or send me to court. Can we deal with the judge in court? It's that simple. Is trying to extort her for $18,000. Now, of course, they're not going to cover somebody breaking into a dead relative's home, stealing it, changing the locks, and trying to extort a homeowner when they're trying to sell it because they're trying to pretend this away. But Binder, of course, dead wrong right here, embarrassingly so, doesn't understand that, of course, every state has adverse procession laws. And specifically in New York City, this is why we're seeing problems because some of these tenant rights kick in in 30 days. There is no like actual like um, squatters rights in New York at least. Um, there should be. But um, to the extent that it exists anywhere, it's because the alternative is brutality that people actually can't uh, fathom, even in like bygone years. Like that's why squatters laws exist in like e England or whatever. It's because like the otherwise you, you just can't. It, because we're so used to enforcing, like, bending society towards the capitalist needs now that we can't even fathom how these sorts of rights could have ever been enshrined for people that just need shelter. So this absolute doofus from behind the camera, I've been informed, is also named Matt. I believe his name is Matt Leach. And he's like, listen, the reason why we have these all the way back to England is because we have to fight back against the brutality of the capitalist system. Now, of course, these rights actually predate the United Kingdom's capitalist economy. They go back to feudal times, so ridiculously stupid stupid point in every possible way. But again, I'm waiting for them to bring up a single case, a single modern case that people are covering. They won't do that because they're too cowardly to do so. So Adele, you're getting arrested right now? Being arrested. For what? For being, for, being my, for being in my own home. And, not, and where's your lease? She's fighting the house. It's not her house anymore. My deed is and legal. Arrested for unlawful eviction. She changed the locks on a man who claims he lives there. While they pretend that these rights don't exist, but they should exist, and this is totally a non-problem, even though we can all see it being covered in our day-to-day -day lives in the media, and we see the real people who are being extorted by these particular schemes. I mean, even the phrasing, squatters versus tenants' rights, but they're one and the same. It's just one is used to say, look at this delinquent over here. Now, of course, Emma, the silver spoon brat of this show, has decided to say, listen, squatters' rights and tenant rights are one and the same and look at the language that they're using because you know how the left operates anytime there's something that they don't like they just want to change the words around it because that will solve the problem but the thing is emma they're not the same they're actually quite different that's the point point. and in fact if you look at the different various proposals in order to address this situation of these scammers stealing properties from people the basics are to distinguish between them and regular ordinary tenants require them to show proof of rent paid, proof of a rental agreement, you know, basic simple things like that. My bill is simple, it's common sense. All we want to do is close the loophole in the law to say to residents, if you, or to say to a squatter, if you don't have right, if you don't have a lease, if you don't have a payment of rent um, and you have those documents, or if you don't have those documents, then you do not get to stay. You are a trespasser and you'll be removed from the property by law enforcement to be able to do their job. And by the way, some of these proposals are way too moderate in my mind. The state assemblyman that is on board for changing this, his big reform, other than having proof of rent, proof of tenancy, is a 45-day waiting period before those rights kick in, which, by the way, is still too short, and it's only 15 days more than...
than the 30 day waiting period. Even the city councilwoman, Palladino, who is going after this particular issue. Councilwoman Vicky Palladino says part of the solution is to change the law, which allows people to claim squatters rights after living in a place for 30 days. She wants it changed to 180 days. They own the property and they have no rights. Squatter rights, oxymoron. Squatters have no rights. Only wants to extend this to 180 days. So what we're seeing are very moderate proposals to distinguish between tenants and actual scammers that are trying to defraud people, but they're pretending like there's no issue at all whatsoever. I mean, Bender over there is going to lie directly to your face and say that there's no such thing as squatters rights laws in the state of New York, even though we have adverse possession laws, even though we we have the tweak to the 2019 law, and even though New York City says it doesn't matter, you're a tenant as long as you're there for just 30 days, even if you're not a tenant. Well, I mean, you know, I, I, you know, I think, I think though, if someone, if someone owns a dilapidated a property that's dilapidated and have had no upkeep to it, and it's yes. harming the the neighborhood or the greater good of the people who live in the surrounding area, and you, it's it's like this for like a decade in some cases. So this is how you know Matt Binder is just lying directly to your face. First and foremost, if you have a property in disarray, that property can be condemned and it can be taken over by New York City. Secondly, notice how he mentions the 10-year timetable right there. That is the exact timetable, not a coincidence, in New York State law in which an adverse possession can actually be legal. But again, this is not the situation that we're talking about. Everybody, to a certain extent, is probably in favor of you have all these abandoned houses in, let's say, Detroit. They have all the copper wiring that is ripped out of them. Somebody moves in. They're only worth about $20,000 at this point in time right now. They fix up the property. They improve the neighborhood. They get to keep the property. That is the entire point of having adverse possession in the United States of America. That's the whole point of having squatters rights in this country. If you till the land, if you improve Improve the land if you make it better, if you have it for a long period of time, but somebody just can't come back later and try to take the property from you because you put so much work in improving the property. But as we find out through all of these cases, they're incentivized to actually do the opposite. They're incentivized to start destroying the property as much as possible, run up the costs on the legitimate homeowner because these are extortion schemes. Now remember, we covered a case out in Douglas in New York, the case where an elderly couple bought a home for their child who is an adult child with Down syndrome and the reason that they bought it according to the local news reports is because they're expecting to pass away at some point in time and they want to be able to have their kid with Down syndrome move into the brother's home who lives in the same neighborhood. The nightmare begins. The house came with something unexpected. A man living in their home who they say refuses to leave. We couldn't believe it. We could not believe it. His name's Brett Flores. They cannot come here early when I'm not here. They have keys, they the owner. This is what happened when the Landers tried to enter with an insurance inspector. They say Flores called the cops on them, even though they say they gave him 10 day notice. He wasn't a renter. Never. You didn't sign documents that said, we have a tenant. Correct. Court documents detail in Flores' own words why he's there. A signed statement says he was hired by the former homeowner as his caretaker, was paid $3,000 a week, and his employment ended in January of last year when the man died. He claims he has a license to stay in the house from the previous owner. What a lot of people don't realize is in New York, squatters have rights after 30 days. 30 days. How can you have rights if you have no lease, you're not paying rent? However, they can't do that because a man called Brett Flores, who according to his own court documents, says that he has a right to stay in the property rent-free because he was a caretaker, allegedly, to the previous homeowner, refuses to leave. On top of that, he is airbnb extra rooms in the property, or at least he has listings on some websites. So what is your right? Not only has Flores been living there, they claim he listed the home online to rent rooms to other people. The only way to try and get him out? They're taking him to a landlord tenant court, trying to get him evicted. For other rooms in the property, and he appears to be running up the electric bill on these people, like we showed you in that segment. Filed a bankruptcy, so that prevents everything from going forward. Meanwhile, they've been paying all the bills. Leaving windows wide open. 24 hours? Including thousands of dollars in utilities. You have $2,400 electric bills, which are absolutely absurd. Well, according to his documentation, he was offered $40,000 to leave, but he wants $140,000. But that's not all. He's also suing for $2.8 million in punitive damages and $420,000 in treble damages. Now again, according to the homeowner's family, he declared bankruptcy, which has stalled the eviction proceedings. 
thus delaying this even further. So while Matt Bender is lying to your face by omission while he's talking about squatters rights that don't exist in New York, but also talking about the specific time period according to New York state law that this is supposed to kick in, this is what's actually happening right now. This couple is being extorted for $140,000 for a property that they bought, that they own, that is not dilapidated at all whatsoever because somebody says they're entitled to live there rent free because of some ridiculous caretaker agreement. This is the most absurd thing I've ever heard in my entire life. You're taking care of an elderly, sick, dying person, that person dies, and then all of a sudden you have the property, you have the home? Insane. Like then, yeah, they, the city should take over, the local municipality should take over and say, we are taking this property from you, you are delinquent on it, you don't care for it. We do that with other things. Like, you, you should yeah. not be, uh, oh, like, someone who wants to live there and, and actually care for it should be able to take it over after a certain period of time. Yeah, Binder, that's already the law. That's already what we have in terms of squatters' rights, the laws that you say don't exist at all whatsoever. But the thing is, that's not what's going on. These people are breaking in two properties. They're stealing the property from the homeowner. They're destroying the property in order to extort money from them. But you don't care about that because you're a propagandist and you want these people to be hurt because, you know, if you saved up your whole life in order to buy a home and you get screwed over, sad day for you because he's a communist dork that looks like a homeless person himself and he thinks that's justice. Yeah, I mean, just to your point, Matt, I think that the, the squatter thing is just a concerted moral panic to make, uh, you know, the homeless uh, moral panic wasn't being inflamed enough. And so now the implication is that they're going to break into your home. Like you're going to go away on vacation and they're going to break into your home and they're going to squat in your home while you're out like in Turks and Caicos. And then when you come back, like, well, these squatter laws, they're not going to be able to get them out. They're going to have trash the place. And it's to make, you know, homeless people seem even more dangerous. So this guy right here is saying, oh, this is propaganda against homeless people and all that. But none of the cases that I've highlighted are people who are in particular financial strain or who are homeless. In fact, there was a case I covered years ago in Bayside, Queens, very close to that Douglasson property and the flood property, I believe, where these people came into this house that was on foreclosure from the bank. They ended up renting it out on Airbnb to multiple different people. And the people who were renting this property ended up shooting up the entire neighborhood. 38th Avenue is normally a peaceful block here in Bayside, Queens. But this was early Sunday morning. Guns ablaze. It looked and sounded like a war zone. Surveillance video capturing it all. Residents say it's due to squatters at this home on the corner of 209th Street. They have out-of-state plates and some don't even live here anymore. And they couldn't get them out despite the fact that they had a state assembly person, a city council person, and a state senator all there condemning these actions because, yes, with the eviction moratorium at the time, but even absent that, these squatter protections are so absurd that you could seal a property in order to Airbnb it. They were called absentee squatters in that segment. So these squatters are absentee squatters, if you can imagine how ludicrous that sounds. Absentee squatters who are renting out the place that they are squatting in that they don't actually own. Renting it out on Airbnb in ads like these for about two years now. But today, a crowd of residents and community leaders gathered to say they are fed up. Last weekend's bullets penetrating at least two cars and the gunfire going right through a child's car seat. But they weren't homeless, and we have no reason to presume that they were homeless. These are sophisticated scammers. These are criminals. But they have to pretend as much as possible that these are innocent angel Aladdins because they can't address the heart of the issue. This whole segment is insanely dishonest. Or to give this new edge to them that will make it easier for what I can only assume are like tenants associations, I'm not tenants associations, uh, you know, uh, landlords, you know, landlords, landlords essentially, tenants, yeah, landlords associations, and real estate like Florida, groups. Real yeah. state groups to like kick you out of your home uh, when you miss like one payment like because you're now suddenly a squatter. So here we have the conspiracy theorizing from this dopey individual on the left where they're trying to scare you guys into backing the squatters, into backing these home thieves by saying that this is all just a concoction, just a scheme to kick you out when you miss one rent payment. But the fact of the matter is that's not the case. If you look at the proposals in the New York City level, which by the way won't pass, and at the New York State level, that's not what they're trying to do. They just want to actually have proof that you're a tenant of this property. And so now the implication is that they're going to break into your home. 
Like they're going to go away on vacation and they're going to break into your home and they're going to squat in your home while you're out like in Turks and Caicos. And then when you come back, like, well, these squatter laws, they're not going to be able to get them out. And by the way, it doesn't even have to be a situation where you're on vacation and somebody moves in and takes your property. There was actually an incident in a local news segment that we covered that when you dig into it is so absurd, so asinine. There's a reason why all of these cowards on the majority report can't address it. So a woman was unloading groceries from her car moving them toward the home this is what she was doing but she left the keys in the lock while she was doing this so somebody actually ran up grabbed the key locked her out of the door she called the police but before the police got there this person wrote his name on the mailbox slot because a lot of people don't fill that out so when the police showed up they said listen we can't adjudicate this on the spot this is a civil matter and it took three years for that eviction proceeding to go through. This happened in 2016, and then in 2019, this person was allowed to be evicted. And need I remind you, if this would have extended to the point of the COVID moratorium, that illegal squatter would have still been there. Also very important for you to understand, the legal tenant is the one who left her key in the lock in this particular situation. So all of a sudden, the legal tenant with all of the property that they had in their apartment is completely screwed over by this new illegal tenant that moved in. And guess what? They were completely out for a home for three years. So the legal tenant got totally screwed over in this instance. It's not just the landlords, even though the landlords oftentimes pay the financial costs. But in this specific case, the tenant was screwed over because a new person was in the apartment with all of her property for three years. So yes, this is an absurdity on top of an absurdity. We covered a case in Jamaica, Queens, where somebody stole a property, same kind of deal, and they ended up filing in their court documents as proof of possession, not a rent payment, not a utility payment, nothing of the sort, a Shake Shack receipt, a $25 from Shake Shack that they ordered at Uber Eats. And these dopes are pretending that this is not happening. These absolute buffoons are trying to gaslight you into thinking that this isn't a major problem, that they're not exploiting a loophole in the law, that there isn't an overloaded backlog in the eviction court system, and that this system isn't broken. They're like greedy landlords are just trying to throw you out in a moment's notice. Again, already right now in this moment, it takes almost two full years on average in order to evict somebody. Almost two years in order to do that. You think we're going to go from two years to three days overnight? Not with these weak proposals that we're seeing from the state assemblyman and the city councilwoman that actually care about this issue. Not to mention all the people in New York State and New York City government that couldn't care less about this situation. Just a little bit of this announcement for uh, any rich people who live in a rich suburb and uh, land banking and empty house. Just remember to change the law. This is housing advocate Purple Pingers, aka Jordan Vandenberg. And he's got a message for the owners of some of Australia's roughly 136,000 empty homes. Now, they go to this stupid segment of this Australian guy who's advocating stealing homes in Australia. Now, this particular person, at least in his videos, from what I've seen so far, even though he's advocating for stealing luxury homes that people actually take care of, is showing a bunch of dilapidated properties and whatnot. And they're trying to make of this the main issue of this particular case but as I said before this is a deflection why are you looking to a segment all the way in Australia to discuss this issue when you're all New Yorkers this is a red-hot issue in the city of New York right now in this moment and the reason why is because you know for a fact that this is not what is going on. You know for a fact that the stories out of New York City are absolutely crazy. They're not favorable to your narrative, which is why you're not covering it. No coincidence that when you have a story of a woman whose mother died, had a Manhattan apartment, she ended up going to Spain post the death of her mother on a trip, comes back in order to clean out her mother's apartment. Police say when Vitell arrived, she found two squatters inside the 19th floor apartment. A struggle broke out and the victim was slammed against the wall and died of blunt force trauma to the head. Her body then stuffed inside a duffel bag. Police say the suspects then stole the victim's car, crashed it in Pennsylvania, and then took and gets murdered for her trouble by squatters that have moved in, that this doesn't make the majority report segment because they're trying to propagandize
surprise you. So the, so the point here is like these are houses that are just left vacant. They're not. Um, uh, and nobody's allowed to move in because the people who own it aren't allowed to get enough of a return from the people who would be tenants of it. Um, so they just are left there. And he points out like if I, I have zero interest, and particularly using my platform to say like oh the people that are holding these houses vacant, um, we should have we should be again we should be supporting them. No, absolutely not. Go ahead, brother. So again, we have the guy from behind the camera just lying to your face. He's like, listen, these are properties that are being held vacant. They're just they're just dilapidated and all that. And it's all because these greedy capitalists aren't trying to get a return on their investment. Well, let's talk about vacancy rates in the city of New York where this issue is prominent, because according to a recent report from New York City, we're at in and around between one to two percent vacancy for the entire city of New York. Now, I want to point out to you guys out there in the audience that vacancy rates should be elevated in the country because you have people moving in, moving out, and all these different various situations that would allow a property to be vacant, and they're completely misrepresenting that idea. So one of the left's favorite things to do, and you'll see this stat, by the way, littered throughout the comments section of this video, is they'll talk about how there's 15 million places, homes and or apartments that are vacant across the United States of America. Now, first and foremost, this is just a snapshot of a moment in time of the vacancies that you actually have. This includes properties that are listed for sale that will only be vacant for a few months, rental properties that will be rented again in a few months, and it also includes vacation homes. Now, I already can see people on the left wing saying, hey, I don't like the idea of people having a vacation home. You shouldn't have a property that you're just enjoying for fun because I'm a sourpuss left winger and I don't like that idea. And you can hold that position. I'm not gonna argue against that right now in this very moment, even though you are in fact wrong. But the fact of the matter is that those vacation homes are in vacation home destination locations. And these are not the same places where people are squatting. So when you cite this national number of 15 million homes or 15 million residences that are unoccupied, what you need to understand is that the overwhelming majority of them are only temporarily unoccupied, as in they're about to be sold and or rented. And the ones that are long-term unoccupied happen to be in areas that either nobody wants to live and nobody's squatting in, or in areas that are vacation destinations. But in high demand places, that occupancy rate or that unoccupancy rate is actually extraordinarily low. And by the way, this is a problem. You want more unoccupied units because that shows that you have a moving market that would bring prices down because renters would be moving from place to place. But the fact of the matter is in places like New York City where properties are going up, Unsurprisingly, the supply of those properties are incredibly low, and that is resulting in those properties going up. Again, look at this map for yourself at circa 2022, and it's not that different in recent years. The vacancy rate for the top 75 largest major metropolitan areas are almost overwhelmingly in the lowest category, which is the sub 11.2%. And these are also places that are incredibly expensive to live because contrary to what these complete and utter idiots think, the reason prices are high is not because the greedy capitalists are trying to hold these units off the market so that they can elevate prices. And the only way to bring prices down is to lower that vacancy rate. In reality, low vacancy rate correlate strongly with high prices. It's almost as if, and call me crazy if you guys have ever heard something like this, a low supply with, with a high demand make prices go up. If only there was an economic law that could explain this in such a succinct way. So when these people are talking about occupancy nationwide and how, oh, you have all these properties, what they're not telling you is that these properties are disproportionately in areas where people don't want to live, like Detroit, where they used to have 2 million residents and now they're down under 1 million. Those properties are free for the taking. Feel free to go squat there if you want. That's where adverse possession is all about, is building up neighborhoods that have been abandoned, or they're in vacation destinations that, again, don't have this high concentration of homeless people. But the places where they squatting is a problem are places where left-wing policy, left-wing regulation prevents people from building, where you have very low rates of unoccupied homes and or apartments, and it's done primarily by scammers, not by homeless people. Uh, so much of this media, uh, your neighborhood grocery outlet is inviting you to spring in the city. Hello, Angel. Angel, we have part two, Angel. Uh, you know, you're a San Francisco born. We're going to go to New York, okay? We're going to go to New York. I know you go there all the time. 
time to time. Okay, but then uh, it's scary there. Okay, Angel? Okay. We'll check, okay? We'll check it. Okay, so you take care, huh? So we'll watch the part two, okay? Part two, Angel, watch it. Yeah.